Okay, listen to me closely because this is an important video because I'm going to be showing you all the ways you subconsciously give women certainty and your approval, which ultimately lowers attraction. The reason why this is so important is because men know not to do these things, but the problem is, is you don't know how it shows up. And if you don't know how it shows up, you're going to notice a decrease in attraction. Now, once this video is over, an important thing you're going to want to do is learn MBT, masculine behavioral techniques. And I have a full length in-depth presentation behind the scenes that I put together in the description. So once I'm done with this entire 20 minute whiteboard presentation today, Go down in the description and check that shit out. You're gonna love it. So I had a guy comment on my last video about ways how certainty, okay, and giving a woman certainty in any way, shape, or form lowers attraction regardless of what she says or regardless of how her personality is. Okay, I had a guy ask me, okay, so what are the ways that men show certainty? And I thought this was a really damn good question and the reason being is because when you show a woman that you like, love, adore, admire, or genuinely want, you are going to do things through your sub communication that you do not normally do. Okay, here's what I'm trying to tell you. Just like a masculine man who's super masculine can pull certain things out of a woman, right? Like a woman who's like hardcore independent, you will notice that if she's around a specific type of man, okay, when she's around him, what's going to happen is she's going to start to act more feminine. You might notice that she uh, starts folding uh, towels in your bathroom or she starts, you know, tidying up like the blanket and the pillows around your house and she starts making things look good like her. You, what happens is your masculinity pulls out natural feminine care qualities out of her. Okay, here's what happens to men. When you're around a woman who you view as a dime, or super sexy, okay, she is going to naturally pull things out of you that you don't normally do. So the reason why I titled this video today, ways you subconsciously give women certainty is because if you don't catch yourself doing this, the girl that you think is like super cool or the girl that you think is uh, blah, 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 what's gonna happen is that you're going to notice you start acting differently and that acting of di like that difference in how you're acting shows up through sub communication, nuances, vocal tone, and you will end up noticing a shift in energy and a decrease in fucking traction. So because of that, we're gonna go super deep today so I can explain to you ways that you will start acting differently without you even noticing it so that way you can stop this so that way you don't make these mistakes that majority of men make. So first thing you gotta understand, okay, the first thing you gotta know is why you never do it. Why you never give women your validation, why you never, never give women your approval, why you never give women your certainty. Okay, this is important because from the outside looking in, from the naked eye, majority of people are gonna hear me say that, men or women, I don't care, and they're gonna say, well, you're, you're cruel, you're a prick, you're an arrogant fucking asshole, and you think you shouldn't give women your certainty, because you, you try to appear higher value or you wanna be better or you're looking for a power trip or an ego boost. That is not what I'm talking about. Here's why you never do it, okay? Women as a whole only love, cherish, adore, and respect specific types of men. And what I mean by that is women only love men who make them feel inferior in sexual market value. If you make her feel inferior in sexual market value, meaning she views herself as an eight, and she views you as a nine, okay? Or she views herself as a six, she views you as a seven or an eight, That's, that shift in sexual market value where you are above her is what's going to draw her in to make her not only obsessed with you, but is actually going to make her want you on a deeper level. So when I say women only love men who make them feel inferior in SMV, this is a feeling. This is not a statistical ones and zeros thing like, oh, I make 100 grand a year, he makes 150, so yeah, I'm gonna act accordingly. It's a feeling. You can't address this logically. Okay, so you might be wondering, well, okay, so how do you, how, how do you actually get that feeling to come out of her? AKA, this is when the guy becomes an arrogant prick or the guy knows how to act like an arrogant prick. If you act like an arrogant prick, you're going to register as a higher sexual market value than her because you're able to. Okay, men who have an inferior sexual market value to the woman, she starts to get a sense that that is not like, like, like she starts to feel like she deserves better. So this arrogant prick vibe that the bad boy or the asshole can naturally start to display, okay, what's going to happen is she's going to gravitate towards him and that's going to signal love, that's gonna signal respect because she feels like she can genuinely submit to him on all levels and adore him. So here's what you have to understand. Here's where a lot of guys go south is guys look for quality women. So what I mean by that is they conflict personality hardwiring, okay, with her actual biological female hardwiring. Some of, you are, some of you are going to know exactly what I'm talking about, okay? When I say personality hardwiring, they're gonna see things like, oh, she's loyal, 
okay? She's maybe loyal to uh, you know specific friends, she's loyal to her family, okay? She's hard working. This is the type of girl who will work overtime. This is the type of girl who you know studies a lot. She doesn't party, she's smart, she prioritizes herself, she gets good grades, she takes care of herself in the gym, she eats well. Okay, so they look at this as a personality hardware and they're like, wow, this girl's a 10 out of 10. She takes care of herself, she's well-rounded, this is the type of woman that I'd want. So you're gonna have to fight some of your own natural instincts and your own natural intuitions here because your logical brain, your male brain, is going to reward good behavior. Your male brain is going to look at specific behavior out of the woman and think, hey, because she's this, I can now act like this. Because she is X, I can now act Y. That is not how it works. So what happens is personality hardwiring actually starts to conflict her female biology. So what guys start to do is they're gonna say, well, she's different. I can now adore her just as much as she adores me. I can now validate her just as much as she validates me. I can actually start to treat her as a woman who I genuinely care and am invested and attached to, and this isn't going to loyal, lower desire. This will completely fuck you. When I say this will fuck you, okay, this will take a guy right here who's a Hollywood celebrity multimillionaire boss on a yacht. And when he specifically acts differently to specific women that he has higher desire for, she all of a sudden looks at him as a lower sexual market value option and she will actually chase a different guy's approval or validation who on paper may even be a worse fit. So now that we got this out of the way, now you have to understand the ways that you actually start to subconsciously, okay, give women certainty. The first thing, okay, is through validational touch and lust. There's a reason why lust is one of the seven deadly sins. And it's not one of the seven deadly sins just because you might think that you're gonna go to hell and you're too full of sexual pleasures. This right here is going to emasculate you. This will strip you of your natural God-given masculinity. Here's where this is hard, okay? It is very easy for you to sit on a couch and act calm and cool and collect. Okay, if you're around a girl who you view as a seven or an eight, or just a local hot girl. Okay, maybe you're in a you're in a small town, or you're in just, like just a local hot girl. She's sitting on the couch with you, easy to kick back and chill. You watch what happens if I put a Victoria's Secret swimsuit model in front of you. This validational touch and lust starts to come through. So the hotter the women, okay, the hotter the woman, the more touch the man starts to crave. The more touch he starts to crave, the more he is actually seeking for her approval. Okay, that touch, that constant need, she senses that attachment. It's like you're trying to touch, you're trying to reach out, you're trying to feel, you're trying to have intimacy. These are feminine traits. Women's touch is lethal. If you are constantly gravitating towards a woman's touch, this is lethal. What's gonna happen is you will build an attachment without yourself even realizing. So, what you have to know about men who naturally build attachments through lust, okay, is that women can't submit to men who are attached to them. This is impossible. I don't care if you're a CEO of a Fortune 500 company, I don't care if you're a NASCAR driver, I don't care if you're in the NFL, women cannot submit to a man in any way, shape, or form, adore him, love him, desire him, cherish him, give him her best femininity if he is attached to them in any way, shape, or form. Meaning, if it doesn't matter what it is that created the attachment, it doesn't matter if it is sex, it doesn't matter if it is you fell in love with a personality, it doesn't matter if it is how the, the woman acts and you think she's different, doesn't matter, a woman can no longer look up to you. This is why you have to be stronger than your emotions. So throughout this whole channel, I've, when I've talked about things like being emotionally detached, stoicism, masculine, like masculinity traits, okay, ways to demonstrate masculine energy, that is prepping you for the real life situations you're going to have to encounter, which is are you stronger, is your logical, rational, masculine brain stronger than your emotional impulses, okay? There's levels to this shit. There's levels to this shit you're gonna experience in your teens, 20s, 30s, so on and so forth. And the more you level up as a higher value man, the hotter the women get. Let me tell you this, the harder you will be tested. The harder you're going to actually have to fight your own natural urges to start to bend or acquiesce certain behaviors. A man who is blind to this is going to make all these mistakes because he just doesn't know any better. Okay, and part of this is the social programming. Part of this is just how men start to behave when they actually care about something. Okay, if a man cares about his business, he puts time into it, he nourishes it. Men cares about his body or how he's looking in the gym and his strength regression, puts time in and nourishes his nutrition. Men are naturally like, we take care of things we value. You're going to have to start to fight some of your own biological masculine like urges when it comes to this or you will start to make these mistakes. Women cannot submit to a man who is attached to them in any way, shape or form. I don't care if she is a straight A student, I don't care if she's hardworking, I don't care what type of parent background she comes from, I don't care if she claims she's religious, I don't care if she claims that, yeah, blah, blah, blah. You are going to notice 
bitchy your behavior, you're going to notice a woman who is no longer actually adores you and cherishes you, and you're going to notice a woman who's going to start to seek a higher value male. When I say higher value male, I do not mean higher value male on paper. I mean higher value male through sexual market value, meaning the feeling, the internal feeling. Okay, it's a feeling. A lot of times she can't even describe it. She's gonna be like, well, I don't know, he just makes me feel a certain way. Or I don't know, I can't stop thinking about it. It's a feeling. If you like, she, she probably can't even tell you why she feels a specific way. It just happens to her. So women want their emotions to be led. If you can't lead her emotions, she's not, not going to allow you to lead her in the physical world. Therefore, you're not going to actually have the time investment of actually being with that specific woman that you like or that you do want. Okay. All women you need to treat completely the same and you're the man, which means you need to act like it. Okay. When you are craving a woman's validational touch or lust, Okay. What this does is this reveals your sexual market value. Okay. Now one man's trash is another man's treasure. Well, a five or six to one guy might be another guy's 10. Okay. This is completely based on like preferences. Every man has specific preferences. So when I'm calling you out on this, don't think that there's anything wrong. Like a, a, a dime to me might be a seven to you. Okay. And that's okay. But it reveals your sexual market value. So when you're needy and you're wanting that touch, you're wanting that validational touch, okay, and you're wanting her, her intimacy, at which will lead to lust and you needing that sex, this reveals your sexual market value. This shows that you're probably in a scarcity mindset and she knows that if you like her this much, it's probably gonna be hard for you to replace her. Therefore, a woman does not want a man in any way, shape or form who could not replace her because now she feels as if she is actually dating down instead of dating up. So this is the first way that you're going to subconsciously give women certainty is through validational touch and lust. Okay. If you can actually fight your own impulses, if you can fight your own sexual desires, if you can have self-discipline to withhold a lot of that and you let her come to you, right? You let her do the hand holding. You let her start kissing up on your neck first on the couch. You let her start to try to seduce you. Okay. Those are ways she's seeking your approval. That is how you want her. That is how you want the relationship. If you can do that, what's the second thing? The second way that you subconsciously give women too much certainty is through needing companionship. Right now we have a, a, a whole generation of men who've needed companionship because that's what's pumped through your subconscious. If every musical, like if, if every country song is about heartbreak and the girl leaving, if every single hip hop song is about how these you know what's are not loyal, if every single television show is about the guy who wants a girl and they fall in love and build this family and happily love after and love happily ever after. That's what's in your subconscious. So it's, it's partially your fault, but it really isn't because what has happened is that we have actually had a generation of men who have been told that their God given purpose is no longer as important as the companionship that they should be seeking and finding from a woman. This is bullshit backwards behavior because the truth is that women are the ones who need and crave that companionship and women are the choosers, which means the only way she chooses you for this is if you can show and prove that you have higher sexual market value than her, which is a feeling. So, Needing companionship is a way that you give women certainty. This is feminine behavior. And this is also a hundred years of false programming. So when you look at how men operate like this kid, women crave companionship. Okay. When you look at companionship, this is not the typical movie narrative that you think where we handhold, we, we hold hands, we skip daisies, we, we pick daisies, we skip rocks and we kiss happily ever after. And then we go back to the home and we, we make babies. That is not how it works. Women only crave companionship for men who are arrogant, selfish, self-serving assholes, meaning they crave this companionship for men who do not need them. If you do not need her in any way, shape or form for emotional stability, emotional support, someone to talk to or companionship, this is the only way she can fall in love which means the companionship seeking needs to be on her end. It is her job and her biological duty to want to crave and to find a high value mate. By you needing that companionship reveals your sexual market value. And now what tends to happen is you're going to be looked at as a lower value mate. So this is like for a lot of men, this is like even tons of like brain rewiring. Like you're going to look at guys, a lot of guys like check their text messages all the time. They, they check their email, right? They check if they have any DMS from women. They're constantly upkeeping their dating life. Okay, these are things she should be doing. You 100% should be 100% focusing on stacking cash with your career, which should be tied in with your God-given purpose, which stems into your self-improvement and leveling up financially, and you putting priority on yourself. 100% self-serving, selfish, self-centered, a masculine man who's driven with purpose. You care about your mission in life, and that's it. Whoever comes along for that ride on that train, uh, more power to them because they probably picked the right, the, she probably picked the right guy. 
But that's your job, period. End of discussion. The emotional communication companionship side of things is the things that emasculates men. Okay, this leads me to the final point. The third way that you subconsciously give women certainty is through needing to communicate. Okay, things like check-in texts, things like how's your day, things like what's for lunch, what's for dinner, or what movie did you go see last weekend, needing communication and conversation through text calls, okay, to test if she likes you. This is the quickest way to emasculation. And like I've told you, you won't know these things are happening. These are subconscious. When I tell you they're subconscious, the, not only like, like when a man acts like an arrogant prick to a woman, and she adores him, she cherishes, cherishes him, she chases his validation, his approval, he starts pulling feminine traits out of her that she typically doesn't do. Okay, what happens is if you tend to acquiesce this way, you're going to notice, especially women that you really want, they pull things out of you that you don't typically do, and it's subconscious. That's what I'm talking about, subconscious ways you give them certainty. Okay, these things, what it is, is it signals in her brain, this is a subconscious test where she goes, hmm, he needs certainty, he needs to hold my hand. He needs to text me today. Even though it's Tuesday at 8.45 in the morning and he should be working or closing that deal, this motherfucker's out texting me to see if I had a, a good coffee from Starbucks. Do you understand? This goes so deep. That check-in text, she's not even reading the words where you think, oh, it was about the coffee or it was about if we're going to get dinner together. She's sitting there thinking, this guy is, is focused. Right now at 8.45 in the morning on a Tuesday, he is thinking about me. That kills attraction. These are the things that you don't even notice because the majority of the world does not live this way. So men can't need any communication ever. I don't care if you're dating the girl for a week. I don't care if you date the chick for fucking two years. I don't care if you did, it's a wife for 20 years. The second you need to communicate more than she needs to communicate with you is the exact second that the roles have been reversed and she's bitched you. Now there's levels to this. I'm telling you there's levels to this. If you're a guy right now and you're making 50 grand a year and your lifestyle is kind of around that and you can probably pull like six or sevens or eights, watch what happens when you start making six and seven figures. Okay, you're gonna notice different layers of tests, different things that happen when the women get hotter and hotter. You're going to notice that things happen to you, okay, and that you lose senses of control because there's new levels to this. Truthfully, a man probably doesn't make himself into the real man that he needs to be until he's in his 30s and 40s. You grow from every single experience. So men can't need any communication. I don't care if you've been married for 30 years. She's the woman she needs to bring the intimacy, the companionship, and the communication to you. You are her safety net, you are her rock, which means she comes to you with that wave of emotions, not the other way around. You must show indifference 24 seven. The second that you show care or investment, she senses weakness. Now, does that mean that you can't go on a date with a girl? Okay, and have a great time? No, it does not mean that. But what it does mean is you cannot become attached to the point where you show so much care and investment that you want her more than she wants you. If you do that, you've reversed the roles and she will sense weakness and she'll pull back. So the reason why I'm making these in-depth videos is because this is the psychological subconscious nuances when it comes to things like masculinity, masculine frame, stoicism. Like for some of you, you hear these buzzwords and you, you listen to them and you think, oh, I gotta be emotionally strong, but you're like, well, what does that actually look like? This is what it looks like in the real world. This is what it looks like when it's, when it's 8.30 at night on a Saturday and you're cuddled up on the couch with a chick. Like this is the stuff that slowly wears away at you when you have to go through a real life experience. So these are the ways you subconsciously give women, okay, certainty. This is why you can't do it and this is why you have to be stronger than your emotions and spot check this shit before it spot checks you. Hit the like button, comment and subscribe and we'll see you in the next one.